This is a follow-up on my Tough Torque K46 oil fill mod series. If you haven't seen the other videos in this series, they'll be linked in the description below. This is where I mounted my external expansion tank for the transaxle. I located the tank on the left side of the mower so that it wouldn't interfere with my bagger attachment. You can see the bagger's main support here, and it has these two bars that secure it to the top of the mower. I thought I did a good job selecting the mounting point for the tank, but I made the mistake of not test fitting all of my mower attachments. I have a cyclone rake leaf vacuum that I tow behind the mower in the fall to clean up leaves. What I discovered is that the exhaust for the cyclone rake is right next to my expansion tank. You can see that the exhaust port directs the exhaust right onto the tank. I tried turning the port so that it would direct the exhaust away from the tank, but this whole area still got super hot. It got so hot that the plastic tank started to deform from the heat. My only choice is to relocate the tank. Thankfully I didn't drill through the green body of the mower and mounted the tank on a piece of aluminum square tube that's attached to the fenders. So I cut a piece of 8th inch scrap aluminum sheet to fit between the bagger support bars. I'm going to attach the aluminum sheet to the square tube that the tank is currently mounted to. Then I'll move the tank on top of the aluminum sheet, effectively making a new bracket. I'm going to pull off the tank and drain the oil that's in there, including whatever is in the hose. I'm not draining any of the actual oil that's in the transaxle. I need to extend the length of the hose to the new location for the tank. I'm going to use a barb to connect a new length of hose to the existing hose. Originally when I installed the tank, I intentionally used a single length of hose to avoid having multiple joints where oil could leak. One of the downsides of this is that if I want to make adjustments in the future or pull the transaxle off, it's a pain to disconnect the hose from the tank. Having a barb in the middle will make it easier to take things apart in the future. For the new mount, I'm test fitting and marking things before I start drilling holes. Now that I know where everything will connect, I can drill holes to mount the tank on the aluminum sheet. Since the spot where I'll be mounting the sheet is angled, I'm going to put two bends in the sheet to position the tank where I want it. This will also ensure that the tank is level and that the overflow oil sits nicely inside. Sadly I don't have a press break, so I'm going to clamp the aluminum sheet in this work table and see if I can bend it. Bending it with hand pressure doesn't look like it's going to work. The eighth inch aluminum is a bit more sturdy than I anticipated. No problem though, all we need is a little more pressure, kind of cheesy, but jumping on it totally works. Okay, I'm happy with my first bend that will attach the square tube on the mower. Now I'll make a bigger bend higher up for the surface where the tank will attach. Just a few more jumps and we're good to go. Okay, here's my adjusted aluminum sheet. The bends came out pretty well. Let's verify that the tank still fits properly. Looks good. Now let's drill the holes that will attach the mount to the mower. We also need to drill new holes in the square tube that's mounted to the mower fenders. I already measured and marked where I need to drill. I prefer to drill through the front and back of the tube separately rather than just blast through both sides in one go. I think this is more accurate assuming you've measured and marked correctly. Alright, let's get this thing mounted. Okay, we're ready to connect the hose back to the tank. I just need to figure out the right length. To help get the hose onto the tank barb, I'm going to use some clean needle nose pliers to stretch the opening of the hose a little. Everything is all mounted. The only thing that's left to do is to fill the hose with oil and fill the tank up to the max fill line at the bottom. Alright, we're done. We successfully moved the tank from the left side of the square tube to roughly in the middle and a little bit higher. Let's see how things look when the cyclone rake is attached. Looking pretty good. The tank is no longer in the direct path of the exhaust. I don't think we have to worry about the tank getting melted anymore. Thanks for checking out this update. If you found it useful, please give the video a like and consider subscribing. Alright, we'll see you next time.